and she asks, have you ever felt stuck? Do you have a dream that lies dormant? Do you wish you could have more energy? If you answered yes, you are in the right place. If you answered no, you may be in denial. Our speaker today, Nicole Greer, Professional Path Certified Coach, is presenting the demonstration talk from the Speaking to Inform Advanced Manual. She is a certified coach, an entrepreneur, and a race car driver. She races to work, races to pick up her daughter from school, races to her evening classes at her university, and tries not to be on a first name basis with the state patrol. And he loves to, the race to win in life and business. Would you please welcome Nicole Greer. So you've heard the metaphor before, from dust to dust. It's kind of a <coughs> push on the reality that we're just human. So today, I'm going to use the metaphor of the seed of potential to teach you about yourself and the fact that your humanity has a life cycle that you've got to get into and you've got to master. So take a look right here. Here's the dirt. So this is the soil of your life. You have to take it and you have to put it in special container. You put it in the special container and you set it apart put a sign on it and you say, this is the soil that I will tend. The next thing you do is you determine what is your seed of potential. What is it that I am going to tend to, that I'm going to take and put in a very quiet, safe spot, and that I will look at every day to make sure that there's growth. The next thing that I will do is I will take some fertilizer. I'll take the fertilizer, I'll sprinkle it on, and I'll make sure that something is going to come from the dirt that I've been given. The next thing that I will do is I will make sure that some heat or light is shed on my seed potential. And then, after waiting and patience and faith, what will happen? A little sprout will come up. And this will be evidence that indeed inside me, I have a seed of potential. And the, tr the truth is, it's the same for you as well. So when I think of dust, I immediately go into my mother-wife mode. In fact, I'm really worried about the dust in my home because upcoming is our Thanksgiving holiday. But I don't want you to go to that place with your, the idea of dust. What I want you to do is I want you to think about the potential in your being the soil that you have inside. In fact, we could almost say that your soil is your soul. And inside that soul is a seed of potential. So here's the dirt. You have to first acknowledge the seed within. So I believe in my heart of hearts that each and every person here is an ordained creation. I mean, like there is no mistake inside this room right now. Each one of you has something inside you that you were called to grow. So you gotta plant it, you gotta water it, you gotta fertilize it. And so recognizing the seed of potential is step number one. So think about these little seeds. Perhaps one of these are the one that you need to grow. There's a career transition inside of you, a real calling, not the job you ended up with out of college, but maybe something radical that you need to really switch up and get a hold of. Perhaps there's a hobby that's been you know, nagging at you, asking you to please take it up. There could be a journey that you need to go on that you need to map out and get a plan in place for. Perhaps there's an educational track that you need to pursue, a talent to master, an instinct that must be followed, or perhaps there's like a book that needs to be written. So whatever the case may be, you've got to pick up your seed of potential and you've got to put it in the soil for growth. So you plant the seed. Now that you've decided that you've got the seed of potential, you have to diligently prepare the soil and plant the seed. In your life, it looks like taking action. I mean, you're gonna actually have to get out the spade and do some heavy lifting to get the seed in the ground, right? So get out your tools, plow the ground, and choose the right environment for your seed. Surround yourself with people who are growing the same seed. They can give you tips on how to make it grow faster. And you'll begin to plot out what it is you need to do. So now that it's in the ground, it's really essential that we nurture the seed. And the seed tucked in the right environment, it simply needs you to add nutrients and fertilizer. Now this is going to look like research. There's probably something you need to learn in order to grow your seed. You may have to take classes to get the potential of your seed to come out. And you may need a little heat, like
like the sun. So for example, you might need a coach, a counselor, a therapist, a teacher, a sensei, somebody who's going to help you grow the seed. The next thing you do is you wait. Now isn't that the most frustrating part? But for the faith part, for the growth part, you're going to need faith. And faith is essential to growing your seed of potential, and you must trust in your seed. And so this is the test to see if you uh, have the, the, the ability to get it out, because you're not going to get something to grow. You're not going to realize the harvest unless you have the faith to let it sit there. For days or weeks or perhaps months, you're going to have to wait for things to germinate. But don't give up. Faith is what's necessary. Then, when you think, I can't wait another day, I can't wait another moment, maybe all of this trying and, and this seeding and this fertilizing is all for naught, and then all of a sudden, a little sprout will come up. Something will happen. Something will come to fruition, and it will absolutely surprise you. But why does it surprise you when you know that in the seed, although it looks dormant, you know there's life in there? And all of a sudden, it will come up, and then all of a sudden, you you get in this place where you protect the seed and you want to hold the seed and you want to, to watch over it with great care. So get through the germination stage to see a little growth. At that point, it will start to bloom and it will start to bear fruit. After you consistently tend your seed and create blooms, you'll find that this is the most fabulous part. Uh, in a book by Charles Capps, you might want to write this down. It's called Seed Time and Harvest. You can get it on your Kindle for $2.99. He says in this book, everything produces after itself. The seed is in itself. Your seed's potential is for something much greater than your own satisfaction. You know, at first you thought, this is my seed. But the reality is, is if I don't plant my seed, I can't give seed to you all. So I have to plant the seed. Your seed is part of the master plan, or shall I say, the master's plan for growth in this world. Perhaps you could turn into the likes of a huge maple where you might provide shelter or fuel or sustenance for the world. And then once the seed bears fruit, you get to enjoy the harvest. See, that, that's the exciting part, is that when you, you see your seeds of real potential serving the world, then you can have great joy. I mean, there's nothing more satisfying than sitting down to this big plate of fulfillment, knowing that your patience, your faith, your nurturing has paid off. In essence, this is, you know, the heart of Thanksgiving. So the master's plan is available to you in your seed. So perhaps you are longing to grow a seed of potential inside you, much like my client Charlotte did. Charlotte declared to me on a coaching call that she was a writer and that she said, I have this little blog post I've been doing for about seven years. Don't miss that language and how she's thinking. She knew that she had potential in her seed, but she lacked the faith to grow this seed to maturity. But through our dialogues and our conversations, she plowed her soil or her soul and she decided that indeed she would sow the seed of potential in a new way. So within weeks, we decided that she should be in a writer's group. All of a sudden, she found out ways to put down roots so that she could get this book under control. She finally hired a second person, put some heat on it, and got a publicist who said, you already have a book. To Charlotte's surprise, she said, what are you talking about? He said, just look at your blog posts. We'll take the blog post of your entire journey with cancer, and we will turn it into a book called Heartbeats for Cancer. So Charlotte took these blog posts, reformatted it with the information that she received from her writing group. She put it into a manuscript form, and all of a sudden, the beginning of the book appeared. She sent it off to somebody to edit it, and she says on her Facebook post, probably heard a scream all the way from Annapolis, Maryland. I just opened up the box where my hardcover copy book just arrived. So today, Charlotte gives thanks for her seed of potential, and she is speaking all over Maryland, and it's just a matter of time before she's speaking all over the world, because not only does she have a seed for writing, but she has a seed for humor, and she's wickedly funny. So if you want to find out more about Charlotte, you can visit www.charlottesheart.com. So perhaps you think that my sense of urgency about your seed is exaggerated, but it's not. I finally have a poem to awaken you to your seed of potential. So I invite you to straighten your back, 
close your eyes and listen to this. This poem is called On Resurrection Day. On Resurrection Day, God will say, what did you do with the strength and the energy that the food gave you here on earth? How did you use your eyes? What did you make with your five senses while they were dimming and playing out? I gave you hands and feet as tools for preparing the ground for planting. And did you, in the health I gave, do the plowing? You will not be able to stand when you hear those questions. You will be bent down, double with shame, and finally acknowledge the glory of God. Then you will turn to the right, looking to the prophets for help, as though to say, hey, I am stuck in the mud of my life. Help me out of this. And they will answer, the time for helping has passed. The plow stands there in the field. You should have used it. Then you will turn to the left where your family is, and they will say, don't look at us. This conversation about your seed of potential is between you and your creator.